I started my undergraduate career, as most students do, unsure of what I wanted to do with my life. I stargazed a lot as a kid, but as I grew older and the pressures of making money loomed larger, I turned to other fields. So I started at Virginia Tech as an engineer, as one does, <laughs> and I took the classes and I did moderately well, but all the time my mind drifted back to the stars. My second year, I was accepted into an astronomy research program at Cerro Tololo Observatory in La Serena, Chile. As part of the program, each student got to observe for two nights at a major telescope there. So my first night on the mountain, I sat down in the control room, typed in the coordinates of the galaxy I wanted to look at, and this is the picture I got. That was the night I knew I was going to be an astronomer. See, I'm fascinated with how people around the world see the stars. And most recently, this question has brought me to Gabon, a small country in Western Africa, to explore the influence of astronomy in African culture. I spent two months traveling around the country, hearing stories, interviewing experts, and witnessing ceremonies like nothing I'd ever experienced before. One of the oldest religions in Gabon is called Bwiti, and it's practiced by ethnic groups across the country. During a ceremony, initiates were adorned with images of the sun, the moon, and the stars. These objects represent the invisible world that connects the living to their ancestors. And the light represents the knowledge gained from initiation. For the Togo people of central Gabon, astronomy is particularly important in names. A man I interviewed told me, as we are losing our connection with nature, as the rainforests are being destroyed, we look more and more to the stars to keep this connection alive. Sogo culture dictates that if you lead a good moral life, you will become a star after death. And so because of this, children are given names such as Gonde, the moon, or Mononga, the star. For the Bahumbu people to the south of Gabon, their belief system is that any crops planted will take on the physical attributes of their surroundings. Because of this, cassava, a popular West African tuber, can only be planted when the moon is in waxing or waning phases. This ensures that the crop will grow its characteristic crescent shape instead of misshapen and unhealthy. So in hearing these stories and learning about the different influences that astronomy has, I began to wonder, why do these perspectives matter? How can we use them for the betterment of people around the world? These are the questions that brought me to the Office of Astronomy for Development in Cape Town, South Africa. The incredible team there is working to answer exactly these questions, empowering people through astronomy to solve problems, get excited about STEM fields, and improve their lives. On the left is Wanda diaz Merked, a member of this team. Her senior year of an undergraduate program in astrophysics, Wanda went blind. But instead of giving up, she decided to devote her life to making astronomy accessible for the visually impaired. Her pioneering work sonifying visual data has now made it possible for blind students to hear the stars instead of seeing them. The Office of Astronomy for Development also collaborated with the South African Astronomical Observatory and a team of artists to create the Sutherland Reflections Program. Sutherland is the site of all major telescopes in South Africa. Astronomers from around the world will travel through Sutherland to use these facilities, and in doing so, drive through impoverished communities that have been marginalized by the South African government under apartheid. To help bring astronomy to these communities, the Sutherland Reflections Program created a series of art and science demonstrations across the city. This picture from the Visitor Center represents a tale in Sutherland folklore in which a star falls to Earth and a little boy picks it up 
and throws it back in order to keep the sky beautiful. Here in Sutherland, a community center and library were also created to help bring education to the children who need it most. As part of an exhibit, a 3D expanse of stars was created from pieces of broken glass taken from homes that had been demolished by the South African government under apartheid. Here in Sutherland, the stars truly represent the past, the present, and the future. The Office of Astronomy for Development also funds creative outreach proposals around the world. This picture was taken from the Chinese Astrophotography Contest in 2013. For the contest, people across Beijing were tasked with imaging the sky to illustrate ancient Chinese poems. Writers and historians discussed the historical significance of the poems. Astronomers discussed the underlying astronomy. And photographers gave talks on how to take better pictures. Here's one of the winning photographs on the left, which was hung in the Beijing planetarium, and one of the ancient Chinese poems on the right. Through the competition, people were able to learn and get excited about the stars, while further rooting them to their heritage. But of course, no story is complete without conflict. This is a projection of light pollution in North America from the 1950s and projected out to 2025. Year after year, it's getting harder and harder to see the stars. And it's easy to think of this as just a problem for the astronomers, but it's not. This problem affects each and every one of us. We saw what the stars mean to people in Gabon, in South Africa, in China. What do the stars mean to us? In 1803, Thomas Jefferson wrote a letter to famous astronomer Robert Patterson and asked him to teach Lewis and Clark celestial navigation so that they could better navigate the new frontier. Robert Patterson replied, I'm preparing a set of astronomical formula for Mr. Lewis and will, with the greatest pleasure, render him every assistance in my power. How would this country be different had they been unable to see the stars? What might Van Gogh have painted if light pollution had obstructed his view? The very symbol of our nation is the star-spangled banner. Why are we not doing more to protect the sky? This is a picture I took of my view at the South African Observatory in Cape Town. Every person on Earth has a right to this view. The stars are an unparalleled resource for inspiration around the world, regardless of culture, in math, in science, and in art. And they teach us more about ourselves and our history. In the words of a Gabonese man I interviewed, the further we look outward, the deeper we look inward. We tell our children to reach for the stars because we see our futures there. And if we lose the stars, then what happens to our future? Thank you. <laughs>